My name is Dylan, and in this second video on bankroll management, I'll be showing you guys about 15 example hands from the Holder Manager replayer to prove just how real variance is and uh, just how much it can and definitely will affect your bankroll in the short term. But before we get there, I want to show you guys a few places where you can get additional information uh, concerning poker math as such and especially bankroll management. Yeah, the synopsis or the overview from Wikipedia, I find it quite good. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, and especially here, if you go to equity, then you have a really good example of yeah what equity is and what that actually how that equates to expected value. Um, again, here if you go to probability, uh, also linked from our site, uh, then you get a lot of information on that. Uh, it's basically endless links here for everything and anything that you probably. Uh, need to know um, in order to become an expert player. I think people who don't really understand probability or expected value or equity as such, they yeah, there may be good players out there who who don't know this, uh, who at least can't articulate it, um, who are still good players. But those same players with this knowledge, in my opinion, would be even better. So yeah. It's a bit math intensive, but guess what guys, it's poker, and if you don't know the numbers, then you are definitely playing at a disadvantage. So here's the spreadsheet that you guys saw in the last video, which is basically an overview of the hands that we're about to see. Uh, here we've got the stakes, NL means no limit, 100 is uh, blinds of 50 cents and $1, uh, NL 1000 blinds of 5 and $10, NL 200 blinds of 1 and 2, etc. Um, the strategy employed will be covered in multiple future videos, but in short, a hybrid strategy is basically a mid-stack strategy. A uh, big-stack strategy is where you buy in for the table maximum, which is generally 100 big blinds. And the short-stack strategy is where you buy in for, um, yeah, around 20 and uh, play a yeah, very typical short-stack hit-and-run strategy. Uh, this is the hero is always you. Um, in this case, me, of course, um, in online poker terms, and the villain is always your opponent or opponents. Uh, the effective pot is the pot uh, which is reduced to the lowest common denominator, say, um, the lowest stack size uh, among all the all the players involved in the hand. The rake is the yeah the amount that the house takes. Uh, the equity we just had. Uh, again, see those links if it's not clear. It means basically your share of the pot based on your chance of winning the hand. Um, the equity at the push, that means at the point when I move all in, this was the actual equity versus the villain's actual holding, which of course in reality you won't know. Um, so you have, yeah, different topic, we won't go there right now, but basically you're not playing against single hands, rather entire ranges of hands, which I've uh, analyzed over here. So you've got all in the hero's equity at the push, the equity preflop versus the opponent's actual holdings. Uh, the hero's expected value preflop, the hero's expected value at the push, and what the equity is versus the opponent's entire range of hands, all the hands that he could hold, uh, based on statistics and your knowledge of your players. Um, here, the EV based on the range is. What you guys see here, and that was of course explained in the last video. What definitely was, I think, a bit too unclear was the following that I want to cover real quick before we get into the hands. Right here. Um, in the previous video, you guys just saw this. Um, kind of an estimation of your expected value is basically going to be your equity minus the break-even equity you need. That means the chance of winning that you need in order to break even in the long run times the total pot and here that wasn't clear the pot in in this little very simplified equation is of course including any bets and or calls that you and others have made so the total pot once it's all in the middle uh, your equity minus the equity you need times that pot is more or less uh, going to be your expected value so I've given you uh, an example here we've got um, effective stacks of 100 Right from this example above, you're holding tens, and the villain or the opponent is holding ace-king suited. So this little s is the equity matchup 
for that is 54% to 46%. And you may be asking, okay, how do you get that? How do you know that? Right? How do you know that you have a 54% chance of winning when you hold 10s against ace-king suited? You can download this still free program, which is amazing. And the way this works is as follows. You can enter up to 10 players, and you enter your holding here. So I've got 10s, and my opponent has ace-king suited. So you can enter it like that, go to evaluate, and there you go. So of course it was an estimation with the 54-46 split, but that's actually how it is. Underneath here you also see the ties, pots one, pots tied, etc. with the two holdings. And yeah, that's it. You can go in here, select your board cards if you'd like. Uh, let's say the king does come. And I miss. And all of a sudden that equity swing is pretty drastic. From 54% favorite preflop to when the king comes, 88% uh, uh, dog basically when that card hits. Uh, just for fun, let's do this. I've got 10s and I actually flop a set. So I get the third 10 to my pair of 10s. And now this guy with top pair, top kicker thinks he's doing well, but he's actually 90, almost 95% behind me. So these are things that we're going to go over in the future and um, in different videos. But this is a good time to look at this right now because um, we'll be using that quite a bit. Instead of entering the hand just directly into that field, you can also come in here and basically select different uh, different holdings. And you see here, let's standard range here, and that's that represents an 8.7 percent of all hands in Texas Hold'em. You can do it like that, or you can actually grab this bar and then move it like this and you see how the hands above are being highlighted and this percentage is in changing. As you go up you can hit any pair, any broadway just means any two cards from 10 or higher. Uh, any suited is of course the top section, the S. And yeah, you can also hit all and that's of course 100 percent. Yeah, so that's how that works guys. Um, you can also come in here and be very very specific. 10 of clubs, 10 of spades versus ace of hearts, king of hearts. And you see the ten of clubs here and you're probably going to wonder, okay, what happened? It's because this is impossible, yeah, given a clean game. <laughs> so you'd have to go here with uh, spades. Let's go diamonds. And now all of a sudden it works again. So this is what we'll be working with, guys. Uh, the ranges will basically be this. You can come in here, take the range that I've put together for, or that I've estimated for my opponents in the in the coming hands for a, either a cold call or a squeeze, which will be defined in the future. You can just highlight that, copy it, come back over to your poker stove program, and essentially just paste that whole range into that field. So now, let's go ahead and clear the board. Preflop. When I'm holding 10s versus that entire range, I've got 61.574% equity, given that he is on exactly these range, uh, this range of hands. Good, and of course you can come in here, player 2 again, and then add to that, or subtract it as you like. And that's, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, so, yeah, that's how, that's how it works out. I won't go into too great detail, because I want to keep this video relatively short. Um, but you guys can, of course, play with this at your leisure. Um, to better understand the hands that we'll look at right now. And the way I've set this up, guys, is uh, I'm showing my opponent's whole cards, which, of course, you won't see when you're playing online. Or at least you shouldn't. <laughs> and uh, the reason for that is that you guys can see the actual matchups. The percentage here is the equity breakdown given this set of hands. So ace-king offsuit versus ace-king offsuit versus ace-queen suited is something you could enter also three player into poker stove. So you'll see that Holdem Manager's equity calculation is almost one to one with what you'll find here in poker stove. Um, and if we get very exact, so ace of diamonds, king of spades, ace of clubs, king of diamonds, 
wasn't it? Yep. And Ace of Hearts, Queen of Hearts. Now you see how these change subtly. And um, here you also see the 34.38 and the 33.5% distinction. So that's how that looks. Uh, again here, you need to look at the stack sizes. It means this guy's playing with, it's a in a 100 game, as you see up here, 50 cent $1 blinds. The total pot will be listed for you here at 150. The pot odds uh, will be explained in future videos, but just keep your eye on this as we go through this video, uh, just to kind of get you acquainted with uh, how this program works. Uh, the pot odds then expressed as a percentage come here. It's in A because nothing's happened yet. Uh, again, the effective stack is the smallest stack of all the players involved in the hand, and in this case it's us with 31 because we were playing uh, a hybrid strategy here. So we've got 31 big blinds in our stack, this guy's got 50 big blinds in his stack, and this guy has 187.45 big blinds in his stack. So he's so-called deep stacked, this guy's mid stacked, say, and I'm here short stacked, depending on how you count it. <laughs> okay, so there are different strategies which pertain to having different stack sizes and that we will leave for the game specific videos in the future uh, for our purposes here this is really just to show you guys you know how the equity swings occur pre-flop and then flop, a flop turn um, what variance is <laughs> which you'll see here shortly and um, exactly how much that can sting over time and exactly why you should always adhere to bankroll management so here we go this player needs to call one dollar basically the big blind the pot right now so called potter um, also you can see this is dead money is 150 so he's getting pot odds of 150 to 1 which would be his call so in order to break even he needs 40 percent equity in the long run if he were to call all in and he doesn't call but he raises as he should here with ace king in that position Nemo the shark decides to only cold call, so he just called the open raise flat. Next guy folds, next guy folds, and you're seeing the pot odds he's getting here is 2.43 to 1, and he needs 29% to make that call if he were going all in, or 29% chance of hitting a playable flop. So, he folds, and now I'm getting 2.83 to 1 odds, so basically 7, 8, 50, as you see here for the pot to my basically three dollar call and that's how that looks and I need 26 percent if I'm going all in but I of course don't just cold call that I squeeze so that means I'm squeezing the initial raiser he open raises here here's a cold call I from the small blind raise it up to about yeah more or less three three and a half times the bet size in this case okay so uh, okay three whatever <laughs> so I raise that up to squeeze this guy and he only calls and Nemo the shark also only calls Good. so here comes a flop pot here in the middle is 34 bucks and we flop real hard ace seven jack this ace is super improbable because three players are holding aces it means it was the fourth and final ace in the deck which did hit and you guys see here how the equity's changed. He's got 42%, and I've got 47. And all of a sudden, Nemo here with the ace queen has 12, right? Because his kicker is completely dominated here. So it means uh, he has to hit, yeah, this queen in order to win the hand. So, question might be in your minds: Why is this 42% and this 47%? Even though we have the same holding, more or less. The reason is that I have this backdoor flush draw. So if a spade and a spade come, uh, the difference here is basically my draw. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much how that looks, guys. And at this point, now I'm not, what was it, pre-flop was 35%. On the flop, I'm now 47% favorite to win this hand. Turn card comes. Oh, that was unclear. So I push because my total stack is less than the pot here. So if I'm going to make a move, I'm not going to be betting 5 bucks or 10 bucks here. 
I'm going to go ahead and put it all in at this point. So when I do so, I push for my entire stack, and this is the effective stack, for 20 into a $34 pot. He is getting pot odds of 2.66 to 1, so he needs 27% to break even in the long run. He, however, has 42%, so he's making the difference. He's also making a profitable call, even though he's a bit behind me, and that's how pot odds work. So he goes ahead and raises in order to isolate me, hoping that this guy's going to take off, uh, and or put him all in. And the guy with the ace-queen, of course, uh, goes ahead and shoots. And yeah, we get it all in. Pot is 132, but of course, my effective pot um, is going to be reduced. These guys have a side pot going on right now. So here we go. We're all in. It'll just let that run out. 47%. Right here, as you guys see, is my chance of winning this hand. And uh, again, it was too fast. Here comes a turn as a king. Now we're both 45%. Now you see it's exactly the same because I no longer have that that flush draw. And this guy has 10%. Basically, he needs to see on the river. Guess what? Right, a 10. It's the only card that can save him right now, because we now both have two pair. Top two. And imagine that. Ten on the river. <laughs> and this guy, of course, since he had me covered, uh, wins both the side pot and the main pot. And three bucks remains in the middle for the rake. That's what the provider then takes from every every pot played. Uh, whenever the total amount goes over 60 bucks normally. It's normally 5% up to 60 bucks. So this $3 stays in the middle, uh, and the absolute underdog takes down a pot of $129.50. Yeah, completely behind two opponents, and that's how that goes down, guys. That's called variance. And if I were playing here for my entire bankroll of 31, if that were the case, then I'm out of the game. All right, so I didn't adhere to bankroll management. I put everything I had online. Um, you know, lose to a guy that gets super, super lucky, um, an absolute underdog both uh, pre-flop and post-flop, and he, yeah, he hits it on the river and takes down, you know, relatively seen, a pretty pretty huge pot. And that's, yeah, that's variance, guys, and that is going to happen. Best thing you can do is not flip out, not go on tilt, just, um, you know, understand it as part of, the, part of the game and adhere to bankroll management so that you can handle these kind of swings when you do get unlucky. So with that, I want to go back to our spreadsheet here and follow up on that. Okay, so with effective stacks of 100, I go in with one opponent, get called, and I've got this matchup again of 10s versus 10s versus ace-king suited. And we've got this matchup, this equity matchup of 5445. I expect to win 54% of the total $200 in the pot in the long run. So this 54% is your equity, i.e. share of the pot based on your chance of winning versus your opponent's holding or range. Uh, this comes out in this case to an expected value of exactly $108 and your profit is 8 bucks. This 8 bucks is precisely 4% of the $200 pot. So as you see here, to break even versus one opponent you need 50% when there is no rake and again the EV is basically the difference between your equity minus the break-even equity you need and that's how that that's how that works out uh, I've got underneath here you know of course in the given hand you're either gonna lose a hundred or win a hundred but when you do this a million times basically tens versus ace king suited you're gonna be making eight bucks every time you invest 100 and get called underneath here I've giving you guys a couple of uh, definitions. Basically, break-even equity is here. Um, break-even EQ is what I use as the abbreviation uh, in most of the spreadsheets. Uh, this is when the hero is contemplating an all-in call, for example. Uh, you can calculate your break-even equity by basically looking at the amount you have to call divided by the pot plus that amount to call. Uh, an EV calculation, which is a bit more complicated here, uh, is an example of the hero has made an aggressive move on the turn, i.e. a better raise, and he expects his opponent to call 100% of the time. That means he has no fold equity at all. And this calculation for expected value is just basically your pot 
plus the villain's call times the equity you have plus 1 minus the equity that you have times a negative uh, bet amount, whatever you put in the middle. Um, this is why, yeah, for our purposes right now, this little funky simple equation is good enough. That's all you really need to know. Um, but this is how, and this is actually a very simple EV calculation. This can get very, very complicated. Um, and I've got one more underneath here to show kind of how that works out. Fold equity as such is defined as follows. You're gonna, you guys are going to hear a lot of funky stuff from a lot of people on, on what fold equity is. Um, very briefly, it's just the likelihood, the percentage of the time that you expect your opponent to fold. But to calculate that is uh, what you do is basically take one minus the total number of hands in the villain's calling range divided by the total hands in his entire range. So that's yeah, that's going to be your fold equity expressed as a as a percentage, and that when you plug this idea into your EV equation, then you're also including the fact that when you make aggressive moves, you can take the pot down right there if your opponents fold, and this is actually a very crucial concept. It's something that a lot of people forget to include, <laughs> and when they don't do that, um, yeah, they're they're actually making incorrect calculations. So. Let's say here we've got an EV calculation with fold equity. The hero pushes all in, and this is how you do it. The fold equity he expects, defined as above, times the total pot, and the pot can also be seen again as dead money, plus, here we go, 1 minus the fold equity times, and this is a bracket, so it's this entire section, your equity times the dead money plus the bet size, i.e. the effective stack size, minus 1 minus the equity times the bet size. Okay, so in order to be a good player, guys, you don't need to know these calculations, but you do need to have the calculators that I provide for you, or at least uh, have a good intuitive understanding of how this works. Um, and this is, if you do have this knowledge and you do understand it, it's good for your ad hoc analyses after both your online and offline sessions. So that, I think, with this clears up hopefully any po yeah, potential misunderstandings or unclarity concerning the terms that I'll be using here for the rest of the hands. And with that, we'll just basically go down the list. So we just saw this one right here with the assumed ranges for the cold call and for calling our squeeze. And we've given them any pair, ace-9 suited or better, king-10 suited, queen-10 suited, etc. Uh, and the flop call, this is the reduced range that I gave those guys as an estimation. So again, you guys can scroll through this. Um, at your leisure and kind of plug that back into Poker Stove, play with that, see if the ranges that I assumed here uh, would be something that you agree with, uh, something that uh, reasonable players would play. And yeah, you guys can do that after we check out the rest of these hands. Okay, I've left this up so that you guys can kind of see the, at least the beginning section of the range here. Um, as we move through these following hands. And again, please just keep your eye on the pot odds, uh, the pot, total pot odds, uh, both as uh, a ratio and as a percentage. And notice how the equity swings uh, occur from pre-flop to flop to turn. And yeah, then I'll just basically comment on the, on the following hands as if we were doing basically an ad hoc uh, session analysis. So I'll, don't worry if some of these terms aren't clear. Um, you know, if if, um, if there are a few things that, that you don't understand, we're going to be covering all that in future videos. So at this point, just try to understand the essence of what's going on here, especially focus on the equity swings, uh, and again, keep in mind variance and how that went down. So our first hand was a pot of, okay, 129.50, uh, the effective pot for us would have been a bit less uh, 30 and then the 60 so around 90 94 95 50 would have been our effective pot minus the rake then 92 I guess yeah there was a 95 50 we just saw three would have stayed and yeah the guy with the worst hand won imagine that that's called poker guys it's called variance all right next hand <laughs> 